What is up squad, it is your squid. This video is one for my newest playlist, or technically my newest playlist. I have a whole bunch of different playlists and I just tweaked them all today to be even more categorized. I had just one playlist as football and now I've broken it up. But you don't need to know about any of that. These are my patrons. Let's get into the NASCAR video, shall we? Okay guys, thanks for tuning back in if you're a regular subscriber. If you're one of my newer subscribers, thanks for joining. Um, feels really good to be having a bit of a surge because of these NASCAR videos. That's why I've made this one. So yeah, if you're not subscribed yet, but you've seen a couple of my videos now, hit subscribe, that'd be great, and have a look through my playlists. I loved your watch minutes, that'd be great. Give me as many of them as you have. Um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. This video, after uh, I've done two NASCAR videos. I've done one on crashes and one on saves, and this video was recommended to me by about three or four different people across those two videos. Um, and there's another one, like I've got a whole bunch more, like as I said, there's a whole playlist coming, don't stress. But I just figured I'd watch this one first, try and wrap my head around some of the like rules maybe I guess is what they're going to be telling me and stuff or or aspects of the uh, I was about to say of the game but you know what I mean aspects of the what do you call it of the of the competition I guess anyway let's get into it whenever I discuss NASCAR I'll turn with it someone up. who's not a fan I usually hear the words I'm sure there's a lot more that goes into it usually I'll respond to this by saying yeah, you're right. Well, obviously, yeah. But I never yeah. really get the chance to explain what I mean. While NASCAR may look like a bunch of people driving around in circles for three hours... It's not. We're gonna drive straight and then we're gonna be turning to the lamp. NASCAR is really a whole lot more complicated. It's like, look at the I'm fucking thing. This video is a little bit more comprehensive than Blake Look, at, look at, like, that's almost straight up in some parts. 3,400 pounds at 200 miles an hour. Because really, there's a lot more to it. Here are five things you should know before watching as, NASCAR. No. As always, I think I have something in my eye. Not as always, that, that rarely happens actually. My eyelashes usually do their job. Um, anyway, uh, if you want to see this, as always, if you want to see the clip that's down there without me and my face reacting to it, there'll be a link in the description. Go and click it. Number one, loose and tight. These are conditions in which the car is driving. Okay. What this means is... Basically, in a left-hand turn, the car can either try to shoot for the wall, or it can try to rotate to the left and spin out. Ooh. If the car is trying to push towards the wall, you need to drive the car with less throttle. This is called uh -huh. a tight condition. If the car uh -huh. tries to rotate towards the inside of the track, you also need to use less throttle. Ooh. This is called a loose condition. Oh yeah, that was loose. NASCAR teams I wonder if that's where that saying comes from. Like, oh, that was loose. Like, it, when something's like a bit dramatic, you know? I wonder if that's where that saying was born. Race car. The more balanced the race car is, the more throttle the driver can use to the corner. That means they're faster. Teams right address this issue by changing all four tire pressures, changing all the spring rates, changing the way the shocks behave, and they do this asymmetrically since the car only has to turn left. What you end yeah, up with is sense. a million combinations between the left but it's and not... right to figure out how to get a car to be balanced. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. It's like it's not just a matter of beefing up one side and not the other, like with a tennis player or something. Like, have a look at their arms, by the way. If you haven't seen like a tennis player just straight up and down. They've always got one arm that's like huge compared to the other. Um, but it's not as simple as that with NASCAR, NASCAR I imagine, because you've also got parts of the track where it's flat and it's straight and there are other parts where it's up like that. And so you've got to be able to not just have balance, but have maneuverability so that the center of gravity can sort of crunch and roll with the car, but not crunch and roll because that would be damaging. I don't know, I'm going to shut up and let this car go talk. To make it loose or tight, can be the track temperature, the banking, That's the speed brutal. at which the car enters the corner, track temperature, and basically every other thing that you can think See, of. See, look at the angle that that guy, like, we're going back for a sec, I know. But look at the angle that this guy walks on, right? He is, like, on a steep incline. That is banking, not... The speed at which the car enters the corner. Like, I can't drive a car at 40 miles an hour on that sort of thing, you know what I mean? That, that would be flipping me out. All of the tracks are very different. People like to get I imagined it would be a little bit different, at least. But there's really only one answer. Although all the tracks share a characteristic, uh, they all turn left, 
That's pretty much as far as the similarities go. Some tracks are concrete, some tracks are asphalt, some tracks have a lot of banking, some tracks are different at one end, some tracks are super long, some wow. tracks are super short. After all this, you get a lot Lots of variation in the tracks. I, I don't know why I didn't think that would be like... Different and the same can be said for stadiums. I don't know why that wouldn't have correlated automatically in my brain, NASCAR but that was news to me. That's cool. Strategy. Most bolts drivers rely on, on the strategy. Track performing at high speed. The crew chiefs are looking at how to manage their tires and fuel to get them through the race in the most efficient way possible. Oh, that's what they do. Tire wear is a big deal in NASCAR. As drivers push their cars to the limits, wow, the tires look at that. That's really them, interesting. And they could become in danger of exploding. What was that process? Was he like melting off the top the less flickety flickety flat layers? Less or? grip equals slower lap times. Brutal. Fuel there are those safety tires. flaps coming into action NASCAR's again. don't contain enough fuel in them to go from beginning to end of a race. They You're gonna have a pit stop. Refuel. This is where critical pit stops come into play. Pit crews in NASCAR service a car in under 12 seconds, replacing That's all four nuts. tires and refueling. They just rip the windshield off. Crew chiefs plan to play. Is that like a plastic? Pit crews oh, we're just gonna. It's sort of like a face shield, a but like. Just on the on the yeah nice that's cool that's engineering and meanwhile they've all oh shut up sorry but meanwhile they've all got the tires as he's replacing all four tires and refueling the car crew chiefs plan strategies knowing when to pit is critical to minimize the time on pit road. Pitting also gives teams an opportunity to adjust their car. If the yeah, car nice. is too loose or too tight, the team can adjust air pressures and different parts of the suspension during a pit stop. Nice. All right. Teams have gone from running in the top 15 to running in the top 5 in under a few pit stops. Number 4. The driver's so it's a big difference maker. Is difficult. NASCARs are difficult to drive. They have a lot of power, and this power is very difficult to control. Yeah, it would translate to G-Force. You have to have good perception, good hand-eye coordination, and also be able to control the also be strong as fuck. feel the physics of the car around you. Be smart and sure strong as fuck. you're not giving it too much throttle as to where... I remember, right, like, I think I mentioned this in a previous NASCAR video, one of the other two, but I'll mention it again here, because why not, right? There was a, there used to be a series on back home in Australia where they had, like, multiple sports competing against each other for like who was the fittest athlete or who was the best like it was like a it was called cross code something or other or something like that right and it had like aussie rules rugby league soccer cricket um but every like for the first three seasons of it every year there was someone from motorsport would win it because they all just had to be bloody fit buggers you know like to 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 control not just the g-force on their bodies at that speed but also to be manipulating that massive machine to do what it wants and what what you want as the driver, sorry, not what it wants. You know what I'm saying. I'm preaching to the converted at this and point. Also, but... to make sure that you're not giving up time on the track. Yeah. I heard a quote one time, and I'm not sure where it came from. I think it was somebody in F1, maybe. Uh, they said a good driver has a good ass. And this isn't looks, mind you. Uh -huh. This is basically the sensitivity of your body to change around you to make sure yeah, okay. you can feel the vibrations of the car. Practice in racing is called seat time for a reason. Drivers not only have to have a sensitive body that can feel the physics of the car around them, yeah. they also have to be strong decision makers. Yeah, Drivers straight up. have to decide where they're going to place the car in a They've got to decide like to that. maintain the most momentum. They Otherwise they boom into the wall. Racing the track. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Which way are you going to go? Drivers have to adjust Turn his own lane, style. I guess depending on the track. Fuck, that was even mental. That was a cool angle as well. We are going to watch it one more time. Sorry. They do what's called racing the track. <laughs> that was cool. The way the road went. The track. Bank. And look at it, you can see it up there as well, like... The is on the track and the temperature. Not only do drivers have to race against the track... In the foreground. They also have to race against... It might just be the fish island, I don't know. Drivers. This makes a lot of the racing tight, with drivers being inches away from one another on the track. Yeah, far out. This is our also... Oh, a 78 came out of nowhere. Inside the cars can get I'd shit hard. myself. Racers I wouldn't be able to do this. 
No way. 40 degree heat inside of a car for upwards of three, four, even five hours, depending that's, on. That's the ridiculous. This takes a lot of stamina and yeah. endurance. Yeah, you'd be sweating your like absolute balls off. Aren't exactly light like an average daily driver. So think back to the conditions of loose and tight. I didn't think it was that bad. Road. Jesus. Imagine being a driver battling one this of those is nuts. conditions, struggling to keep a hold of your car in 120 oh, degree temperatures for three hours straight. Some people ask me, how can one driver be faster than another when they're all driving the same cars in an oval? Well, think about it. All the cars are set up differently, and, and the drivers have the drivers are gonna like so easy to the drivers are gonna react to the conditions differently because humans differentiate like what a stupid question silly how one driver can be faster than another on a certain condition another thing to mention plus all the variables with the pit stops and all the different one car gets air ratios car, and a like of air is created between the two cars yeah like slipstream the right? the back has less downforce on it this means in a straight line yes. it can go faster however in a corner it can create a push condition this adds another critical tool for drivers to use to create passes on the straightaway or set somebody up going into a corner. And Looks that a pretty too. Like Daytona <laughs> is the only way to pass somebody. If you ever watch the Daytona 500, you might notice it looks like everybody's just following each other around in a big circle. That's because they're trying not to lose the draft. If a single car falls away from a pack of cars, they'll instantly lose all of their speed and that's unfortunate. the pace. That's unfortunate. On to our Fair last enough. topic, the dynamics of the competition. Man, go and give this guy a look. He's really helped me out. This is mad. Team sport. Teams have pit crews, plus engineers and people that help set up their car. They have their crew chiefs and PR guys, you name it, a team can have That's lots 20, of people. maybe even 30 people at the track for yep. a weekend. We've also talked about it's like a whole damn team. there are 40 drivers on the track at a time. It's a lot of people in the pit st in the racing and pit lane. Specifically unique pit lane, that's what is it is, right? That it's a centralized sport. In any other sport, like basketball, baseball, hockey, whatever, you name it, there are many teams playing against each other all across the nation or all across the world. Yeah. In NASCAR, everybody's at one location. You can pretty much go to a track on a weekend and get one piece of the entire story of that NASCAR season. Nice. It's also incredible right. to think about rivalries and tensions between competitors. Yeah, that, that'd be pretty brutal. People spinning each other out like rivalry. from race to race. We won't meet that team again for another few weeks, a month. But in NASCAR, you're seeing the same people week to week. Oh, this brutal. This is how tensions rise in NASCAR. And you Are there punch-ons? story between two teams battling... Oh, do people get out of the car and like is no lull in the have end. a crack? They're battling every week. So there it is. These are five things I wish I could tell people about before they watch Five this things you did videos. tell me about, kind sir. Thank you Thank for you. watching this video. And I'd like Thank to you for making it. time to dedicate it to C.W. Smith. He was a race car driver that raced in the Bush and Arca series uh, back in the late 90s and early I have a feeling 2000s. this is going to get sad. He was from Williamsport, Pennsylvania, right near where I live. He That's was cool. larger than life to me when I first heard of him, but after I met him, I realized he was a very down-to-earth guy. That's dope. He passed away on November. Oh, 4th, that's sad. Yeah, there, there's the kicker. He was one of the many people that's rough. that got my dad and I involved in racing all those years ago. Well, that's and cool. Him, I really wouldn't be. He has a legacy that lives when on I through this video. Stocks, I raced a chassis at the very video. least. And he became an invaluable friend of my dad's when they would talk about setting up the race car and learning how to work on a late model. That's dope. Thank you, CW. That's dope. That's a really cool way to end a video. That's the first time I've left a video being like, oh, wow, that's cool. Oh, and that's the guy. That's the guy. First time you've been in Talladega with this Panasonic sponsorship, and we wanted to make him proud. Thanks, Thank you. Another straight thing. That's nice. 
That was nice. That was a cool video. Let me know uh, in the comment section below. Um, doesn't matter if it's been said a million times before. Let me know in the comment section what NASCAR video you want me to watch next or what motorsport general in video. General in video. What motorsport video in general that you want me to watch next because it'll be coming for this playlist very soon. Uh, if this is the first time you stumble across my channel, please have a poke around. I've got a whole bunch of different playlists now, whole bunch of different content, over 200 videos. I hope you like me. I like me. I'm the harshest critic and I like me. So you should probably like me too because you can't be as harsh as I am on me because as I said, I'm the harshest one. Uh, but yeah, I'll get on with it. Thank you very much um, for watching. I'll see you when I look at you. You'll see me when you look at me. And, yeah, bye.